So hello, welcome to the Woodpecker uh, webinar. My name's Luke and this is Victoria. Hi. And we're gonna be your host for this webinar on Woodpecker hacks and tips because we wanted to relate to you some of the information and some of the features of Woodpecker that you may not already know. And please remember to use the Q&A feature because at the end of the webinar, we'll be answering your questions through that feature. So let's get started. One of the first things we wanted to get started on is one of the basic features of sending emails. And that will be oh, sending, uh, adding a photo, adding a video, and adding attachments to your campaign. So a quick thing that I'm going to talk about before I get started. Um, I will get started with adding a photo. And to do so, let me go into the Woodpecker campaign to show you how it's done. OK. So to add a photo into your campaign, you need to first understand a few features, a few things before we get started. So upload a photo, you need to first make sure that the uh, image you're adding is uploaded to a server. Once it's uploaded to a server, then there's no problem in adding that photo to the, uh, your campaign. And you can always use your own server or some well-known server like Image Shack because they provide the direct, direct link to the file that uh, will be able to allow your prospects to view your image. And so I'll just mention one more thing that to be able to add a photo, you won't be able to add one from your own personal Google Drive or your Dropbox account. It needs to be on some sort of server that your prospects can easily access. So let me show you how that's done real quick. To add a photo such as this, you need to have make sure that at the end there's a .img or .jpeg or dot, uh, or uh, like I said, it needs to be a proper link. And to add so, you need to go to the main edit your campaign and go into add image or insert image in the menu. To add the image, then you paste in the link and click add. And there you go. You get your picture into your campaign. So beautiful. Yes, um, we didn't, we're not sure what to add. So, you know, a cute bunny is always a good uh, thing to add to your campaign. <laughs> and so a quick tip, uh, you can also add an uh, image through the HTML code, but that is for more advanced users. And okay, so now I'll talk about adding an attachment. Quickly, adding an attachment is something that um, first I need to warn about warn you about because Woodpecker does not offer the feature of adding an attachment into your campaign. This is largely due to danger of sending malicious, atta uh, malic malicious attachments in your campaigns, but there can also be deliverability issues. But we have a workaround. We would re instead recommend that you send a, an attachment through, your, uh, through a link. So to add a link, you can insert the link here in Woodpecker and copy the link text. So let me copy this attachment, paste the link to the attachment and the URL and make the link text look nice. Let me show you how it's done so you'll see what it looks like in the Woodpecker campaign. And webinar. And here you are. Now, when you send off this campaign, your prospects will be able to click on this link and go directly to your attachment. Yeah, so Luke, so also you mentioned that adding attachments may cause deliverability issues. So could you explain a little more? Sure. Uh, so remember, sending an email through Woodpecker involves two parties, your private email account and your Woodpecker account. So when you're sending a uh, message through Woodpecker with an attachment, it mm -hmm. can trigger anti-spam filters because they can't see these attachments as malicious. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're sending your campaigns in order to keep your deliverability high. Uh, and also adding a video. I will quickly talk about adding a video because it's very similar to adding a video through uh, just like uh, adding an image and adding an attachment. But luckily there's programs that you can use such as Soapbox. The Soapbox ad provides you with a Chrome extension where you can link, record, edit, share, and measure your videos for your prospects. And it makes it really easy to send a video to your prospects and as you can see here, I have a quickly just sent a uh, recorded a video of myself through Soapbox and I copied the URL and thumbnail and it's so easy that I just have to paste it into my Woodpecker campaign. And there you go. So now once I send my campaign, my prospects will see the personalized video that I sent just for them and they'll be able to uh, get to know me a little better. So it's also a really good time for me to introduce myself to my prospects. Okay. 
Yeah, and also using those videos, those images may also uh, make your uh, reply rate really higher. This is also from our experience, so we really recommend. And uh, now let's talk about, uh, about sending settings and limitations that you have in Notepacker. So once you are done with images, videos, or attachments, or generally speaking, content of your email, this is a time to set up specific hours and days for sending your emails. I'm sure that you're familiar with this function. An additional option that you'll have here, this is apply to all. So by setting the time for one of the days, you can freely apply the settings to all subsequent days. So you don't need to do it manually for all your days. And another option that we have in Woodpecker's campaign, this is send your follow-ups separately. So as you know, persistence and patience are an important part of cold emailing. So this why by default, we have, uh, we include the content of your previous email also in your follow-ups. However, some of our users would prefer to send follow-ups as a separate messages. So now you have a choice. In the edit mood of each follow-ups, you'll have send in the same thread box. So you can freely uncheck this box. In this case, your follow-ups will be sent separately. Also, sometimes we receive really a lot of different questions about the limitation within a specific campaign. So, as you can see, here you have a limitation of 50 emails and the recommended number of emails, this is 100 or 150. And the maximum number of emails, this is 500 emails. And by the way, this limitation applies only to the first email in the sequence, doesn't count follow-ups. Okay, so now I have a question. How can somebody send more than 500 emails a day? Yeah, this is really also a good question. Uh, the safest way is to simply connect more email accounts. You can do this by going to settings, then email accounts, and add an email account. Otherwise, your limit may be increased upon your request. Just keep in mind your email provider limitation so you will do not be blocked. So yes, yeah, since we are already here in the settings, let's move on to the general limitation of the email account that was previously connected. Just click on your email account, then setting, sending, and here you can see 500 emails. This is a limitation by default that you have in, your, um, in, in the Bootpacker and also in the specific email account. Yes, this is the one that we saw before in our campaign, the only difference is that this is your global limitation across all your campaigns and on the chosen email address. Last but not least, sending frequency. By default, Woodpecker will send your emails uh, divided by random time intervals, yet no more often than every, 60, uh, than every 60 seconds. So that means that you are able to send between 30 or 50 emails per hour and on the chosen email address. Of course, there is an opportunity to change your sending frequency. For example, if you wish uh, to send your emails faster, faster. but generally uh, we do not recommend lowering those settings because people rarely send messages more often than every 45 seconds by hand and also sending multiply emails in the short time might alarm spam filters since these filters are very sensitive to such activities. Yeah. And uh, now let's talk about aliases. So sometimes for various purposes, you might decide to send your messages from an alias. Alias is an alternate email address that points to your primary email account. So if you set it up properly, your recipients will see messages that were sent from you as, um, as they've been sent from an alias, but you have all your answers in your main email account. So this is a really great feature. You can use it, for example, if you would like to extend your sending limitations by adding a new email account, but you still want to have all answers on your main email account. So this is the feature you'll definitely need. So Woodpecker supports aliases, but they have to be configured on your email account first. And once, the, once this is done, you can freely add your alias in the general settings. Just click on the add alias button, tap down your alias, and choose whether you, want Ale, whether you want your alias to be treated as a separate email address for additional fee, 
or you just want to update your existing SMTP configuration. So the main difference between those two options, uh, this is that if you will use uh, your Alice as a separate email address, so this means that you'll connect a new email account, which in Woodpecker is considered as adding a new seed. So uh, also using this option, you can run your campaigns simultaneously through both senders. Satisfy? Uh, this is considered as like new email account for additional fee, of course. Uh, another option, this is update the existing SMTP configuration. This means this is kind of replacement with your original email account. So in this case, you will send your emails from an alias and you will do not use the original email account. So we will not charge you for the email address that you do not use. Yeah, so this is all uh, from my end. In case you have any additional question regarding aliases, just let us know in the Q&A section and we will answer on them. Okay, so now we will get on to a next part of our webinar. Bulk tagging and using filter features within Woodpecker. So let me show you how that looks like from the prospects tab in Woodpecker. So to get to the prospect tabs, you have to get up to it through the main menu bar up top. And to ta useful tags that you can use on your prospects are whatever your imag imagination can think of. Useful tags are such as the prospects location, the tagging, you can set, tag your salespeople who are in charge of those prospects. You can also tag the interest level and the first and last date of contact. That's something that I would recommend. And a pro tip is a very useful tag is to tag the source of your leads. For instance, if you're tagging your leads for yourself and testing different tools, you can then use the tags in Woodpecker to uh, tag by whatever prospecting tool you're using, and then use that, those tags to monitor how well your campaigns and how well those prospects are being used and sent. Especially if you're purchasing lists, you can see that with those tags, which of your purchase lists perform the best within Woodpecker. So to tag, a lead, uh, to tag within Woodpecker, first you need to select on the uh, the prospect in the tag bar and you can click from the top down menu one of the current tags such as we have here Wrocław you can tag the uh, location and to add a new tag you can type in whatever you want so let's think of a new tag so I can tag by location let's say new New York and now I click add tag and those uh, and save and apply and now I have a new tag within Woodpecker we also have automatic tags such as blacklisted, unsubscribe, and secondary email within Woodpecker that tags that for you automatically, which is a really useful feature that I think you may uh, be able to take advantage of. Okay, so that's about it for tags. So let me uh, talk about our filters because there's also the filter features within Woodpecker and we'll talk about it a little bit now. So useful filters are status. Status is great because right here you see the useful filters from your whole campaign. Uh, right here, you can see that there's invalid, bounce, to review, auto applied, blacklist. These are all useful filters that I would recommend you try, uh, test out and use. Because once you click active, for instance, you see all the uh, prospects you have within your campaign that are still currently active. In campaign is also a useful feature because, for instance, you have never in any campaign or not in running campaign. So once you click these uh, prospects, you can see which prospects of yours have not been reached out to yet, so you can send them out a new fresh, fresh camp. So you can send out a new fresh campaign. Contacted is simple. Yes or no. Has your prospect been contacted? Or yes or no. It's a useful feature that I hopefully will come in handy for you as well. Mm -hmm. Imported is a great great tag. I'm uh, using this always. It's, so, yeah. it's really useful because then you can t test out, uh, you can search from your CSV files that you've uploaded in Woodpecker and test out the results from those uh, campaigns and it makes it much easier to organize everything. Yeah. And tags. So for instance, if you import uh, your own list with your own personalized tags, then you can search by your tags that you've added into your campaigns by self or by the tags you've put into your CSV file yourself as well. It's really useful so that you can tag by location or by uh, the type of industry you're reaching out to, maybe the title of the person you're reading out to, reaching out to. So I hope you will be able to check out this feature yourself and make use of it. Yeah. And by the way, look, can you find some prospect by the name of some country, for example, Canada or USA? 
Well, not really, unless you add the tagging for yourself in the CSV. So mm -hmm. yes, but no. So for instance, I want to search for a uh, prospect. It's best if I search by their email. So I write in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And okay. first name, and now I have you in my uh, campaign. So I could select you and add a tag. Ooh, Brotsbuff. Okay, and we got the tag already set. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, so as Luke already said, you can uh, navigate your filters and work more efficiently uh, with your prospect, general prospect database, as well as within a specific campaign. So now let's move on to the campaign. Just click on specific campaign. Then you can just click on the prospect. In this case, you will receive all prospects with the status replied because in fact, they are the most important. So you just need to click on all prospects tab to see all other potential clients. And here you can see we have also different filters. For example, you can find your prospects by email address, first and last name. You can uh, find your prospects by the name of your CSV file again and by the status also you can check to whom you have never sent any emails or who has already received some specific follow-ups or even all your emails and the most important filters are opens clicks and interested so sometimes you can get a very positive response like mine here for example so maybe somebody just interested in your suggestions. So you can freely mark such prospects as interested. Then you can freely use the filter interested and filter all such prospects. And by selecting them in the actions, you can export them as new CSV file and maybe later add them to another campaign or reach out to them via another channel like LinkedIn. Also, there is an opportunity to check specific stats. For example, auto reply. When Woodpecker can recognize most of auto replies, most of emails that were sent by autoresponders, this is kind of out of office emails. So, in case you'll receive any auto reply, you'll have all such prospects here with automatic status auto replied. And at the right side, you can just change the date when prospect should be contacted again. So in this case, you will do not lose any contacts because by changing the date, you can reach out to your prospect again. So he will have an opportunity to check your email and transfer on it. Okay, so yeah, so uh, I really hope that these features and these filters will help you in the future better manage all your campaigns. And now let's move on to the Q&A section. Oh, but before we go in there, there's yeah. something I forgot, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but I did forget to talk about a feature within Woodpecker that is very useful. So let's go back to our prospects. It's about the filters and with, uh, with uh, tags and tagging as well. So one useful feature about uh, this tagging, hold on, just need to move something around, uh, is that you can actually drag and drop some of these features. So if you want to yeah. see your country, of your prospect, you mm -hmm. can bring it over closer to where you are looking at your country's information. So you have everything in one place and it makes the viewing easier for you. Yeah. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. Another thing I forgot to mention is the actions button. So I've selected my prospects and I would like to export them. Here I can click export as CSV, create a campaign from these prospects, detect time zones, also delete the prospect and GDPR encrypt. Do not click GDPR and encrypt unless you really want to GDPR and credit because once you click it, yeah. you can unclick it. Yeah. All right, that's it for my side. And now we can properly go to the Q&A section. But before we also would like to inform you that right now we have giveaway in the Facebook. So head on, on the Facebook page and check giveaway announcement. So you can get really great, really nice gifts from us. So we really encourage you to check our Facebook page. Okay, so now we're ready to answer some of your questions. One of the first we, questions we had was, how often should I change my cold email strategy? It really depends on you. One thing that I would recommend is doing regular tests of new strategies and new content. So you can always send a new email. You can always send a different subject line. Changing our cold email strategy works because the industry is always yeah. changing and keeping up with new trends is something that we recommend. So if you want to, for instance, change your uh, campaign, try something new, I would recommend sending a video and see what kind of effect that has on your cold email campaigns. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, um, our next question. Can I automatically add prospects marked as interested in a new campaign? Yes, there is, um, we have, you can freely add your prospect automatically to a specific campaign using an integration tool, Zapier. By selecting a trigger, uh, prospect interested, an action, at create an update prospect in campaign, you can freely add such prospects to another campaign um, automatically, so you don't need to waste your time to do it manually, so it's really also useful. Okay, and another question we have is, how many aliases can I add to one email? This really depends on your email provider. For instance, G Suite, you're allowed to add 30, I believe, yes? Yeah, 30. 30 aliases according to your account. Mm -hmm. Great. So what is the price of an LS if you connect it as a separate email address? So it really depends on the chosen plan. For example, if you have startup plan, so then $40. If you have Team Pro, then $50. And agency, $60 per LS if you use it as a separate email address. Okay. Uh, we have another uh, question. How many follow-up emails do you recommend? Well, when you read about statistics and uh, what type of trends people have with opening emails, third to fourth email is actually really efficient and uh, you see much better results with three, four emails. Five emails is kind of pushing it. Six is over the top. So four to five emails, five is good as well. But it depends on you and what type of content you are sharing with your prospects. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind that in Woodpecker, we have a limitation of eight emails in one campaign. Like first email plus seven follow-ups. This is the maximum number of emails that you can send using one campaign. Uh, and we're going to be almost done with the Q&A section, but please remember if you have any more questions, don't be a few free to write them down because we will respond next week with your and the answers to all of your questions. And one question is, if I have a campaign going, can I add new prospects? If so, do they receive the first email? Yes, you can always add prospects to your campaign. That's a great thing about the Woodpecker is that when you have a campaign set up, you can always continuously add prospects and they will be sent those emails in, uh, automatically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So unfortunately, we're running out of time for this webinar. We have to put it to an end. So before we do, please remember to check out our Facebook page. And uh, so you have a chance to win a free Woodpecker gift. Yeah. So I think that's it from us. Thank you very much for everybody who's uh, attended. And also, if you have any recommendations on what type of topics you would like to hear from Woodpecker uh, covered in the next webinar, please feel free to reach out to us and recommend some things you, you would like to hear from us as well. Mm -hmm. And do not worry if we didn't answer all your questions because we will send you all responses also in the mail form. Okay, so thank you very much. Once again, goodbye and good luck with your campaigns. Thank you, good luck.